I have a technique to share today. Um, I don't know if you can hear the background noise. If you can, I just I apologize for that. We're having our house pressure washed because, you know, here on the Gulf Coast, we get moldy and um, you just occasionally have to clean that off. So there's a guy out there doing that and making all kinds of racket. Um, but I, earlier today, I was looking through some YouTube videos, as I am known to do, and was looking at some jelly printing, and I'm just really about jelly printed out, and I don't even have a jelly plate. How sad is that? I'm tired of jelly printing, and I don't have a jelly plate. <laughs> well, that's not really true. I'm not tired of it. I'm just, um, I'm not really seeing anything new and different. You know, there's really, I guess, only so much you can do with a plate and some paint. Um, and there are some gorgeous techniques out there. Don't get me wrong. I, I love it. I do it on occasion. But I was kind of looking for something new and different. So instead of new and different, I went back to the jelly printing of the early 90s type deal. And I'm going to show you how we did that. But this is kind of the look that you get with, with what I'm using today. It's just really a mottled, kind of stained glass, almost weirdness. And this is like a second or third generation print, so you know, it's really light. These are actually my favorites. I like them better than the really deep dark ones. But um, we're going to use alcohol inks, so yeah, you get really deep and really dark, because they are highly pigmented and that to me is just gorgeous I don't even know if if the camera is capturing the depth of color but just trust me it's awesome this one's still a little wet um, and I'm doing this on all kinds of junk paper you know this is a some kind of junk ad that I got and this was a really glossy paper. You can do it on glossy. Sometimes you get sticky spots and um, you may have to put a sealer over it, but that's only on really, really glossy paper. Um, but I'm using, as you can see, dictionary pages, book pages, junk mail, uh, magazine droppings, you know, just whatever. This was a, a book page. And I think one of the things I like most about this is that on most papers, not all, but most papers, you do both sides simultaneously because the ink um, saturates the paper and goes through to the other side. So sometimes the back ends up even looking more cool than the front. But it's a two for one, which really is a good thing for me because I've been wanting to use more painted papers in some of my junk journals. And I usually bind them, you know, by folding in half, and I need them front and back, you know, both sides done. So doing this, you get both sides done at the same time. So see, not only is it fun and awesome, but it's also efficient. I think that one's my favorite. And do I remember exactly how I did it? Well, no, of course not. And that's that's the thing about this too. You really can't control how it comes out because the inks are so fluid and and they're just never the same twice. Um, you can use any kind of alcohol inks. Um, I'm using today the ones that I've had since the probably early to mid 90s. Yeah, back in the day. So. Uh, they're kind of, they've seen some action. I don't even know if they're still available. I guess they would be. But I'll show you what I'm using. But any kind of alcohol inks. And then you'll need a solvent. And I remember with when we started using alcohol inks a lot that um, the thing to use with them was, was denatured alcohol. That that's what you would use to get them to spread and blend. Okay, I don't have that at my house. I don't even know what that is. Um, I've never used denatured alcohol with my alcohol inks. I just use either regular rubbing alcohol or today most of these were done with acetone which is in some nail polish removers. And you can get it at the dollar store. You can get pure acetone nail polish remover. Um, keep in mind that it is a 
strong, dangerous, toxic solvent. So, um, you know, if you're one of those who wants to avoid anything toxic and unhealthy in your art, don't do this because this is, yeah, this is not really, not really a healthy craft. But it sure does look cool. I just love this. Absolutely love it. And that's really the look, that kind of mottled look is just hard to, hard to achieve on a porous paper um, easily in any way other than this. It can be done with watercolor, but you kind of know what you're doing. And when it comes to watercolor, I don't know what I'm doing. I have the watercolors, I add water, and then that's the extent of my knowledge. So um, I really like the way these turn out. So this just gives you an idea of what's possible. And this one, okay, this one, I tried something, it failed. It really didn't work. So I had this big blob of highly saturated ink, but I was able to lift it and, and get this off of just this paper without any additional ink. So if you do make just a horrible blob, um, it can come in handy because you can print from it. Okay, so what you need is a stack of paper. You can use good plain cardstock, um, you know, if you want it on plain nice paper. This is my preferred paper. Um, magazine pages, book pages, catalog pages, uh, phone book pages, advertisements, junk mail, magazine droppings, you know, whatever. And you will need not a jelly plate, but like we did back in the day, we used a piece of glass. And I sometimes buy frames at um, thrift stores or flea markets, and I even occasionally will use them as a frame. I know, crazy. But more often than not, I scavenge it for parts. But if there's a glass in it, I always keep the glass. I have a drawer full of pieces of glass, just like this. And this will work just fine. This is not a thick glass. It's thin. It's brittle. Um, it's deadly if you break it, so be very careful. You know, if you have a nice thick piece of plexiglass, that's great. My doorbell's ringing. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay. Unbelievable. This is just par for my life, actually. Um, you can probably hear pressure washer guy a little better now because he's moved around the back. He came to the door and the reason that I'm not doing the washing myself is because we rent this house, which is actually, it's a very nice house and we're enjoying renting. This is the first time we've rented a house since before we were married. So, um, but anyway, our situation is still a little bit uncertain as to how long we're going to be here in Houston. So we're happy renting, but we got a notice from the HOA that there was some mildew on the siding on the house and they asked us to either clean it or paint it or you know whatever and Jason and I talked about it and we decided that you know pressure washing would work but we weren't willing to do it because we have told our landlord I usually call him slumlord I know that's a horrible thing to say but in this situation it really does fit okay we told our slumlord you know the siding's falling off it needs to be replaced. There's wood rot from the foundation up past the second floor. You know, I mean, it's bad. They weren't willing to do anything. So we told them we're not going to pressure wash because we don't want to be responsible for, you know, pieces of house falling off. And we can't climb up there and do it ourselves safely, so we asked them to take care of it. So they send Dude out here today. He's got his little pressure washer. He's got a motor. Looks like he made it out of a lawnmower motor. It's still got the lawnmower top with the pull string thing on it. <laughs> and he hooks it up, goes to town, speaks no English. <laughs> no one they send out here ever speaks any English. But we managed to sign language ourselves into a little conversation. It's usually all good. So he works for about an hour, comes to the door, and I guess it's his wife that's with him, and she does speak a little bit of English, and she she struggled through trying to tell me something was happening and I went out and looked and the paint was all peeling off where they washed and I just said yeah you know I, I figured that would happen and, and she said she took pictures and I think we're going to send it to the landlord 
and I said that's fine and then we get around back and the back is really bad and the, the guy who doesn't speak any English you know he's back there with the pressure washer chunks of house are flying off and he, every time I think the only English word that he knows is our landlord's name so he just hands me a chunk of house and he says the landlord's name and then we both nod in agreement and roll our eyes and then he goes back to work so he's out there pressure washing my house away and um, you know sucks for the owners but we tried to tell them two years ago they need to fix that so anyway um, that was my distraction and um, why I don't I don't know where I left off I think I was talking about the, the plate yeah you need glass okay yeah I was talking about what we need we have our paper we have our glass and now you need you can use for this some rubbing alcohol just regular rubbing alcohol you can use that denatured stuff if you happen to have it today what I've been using mostly is some acetone and this is my travel container of acetone and then I also put some this is acetone as well I put it in a spray bottle for a little different look and then I hadn't been using the alcohol I went upstairs to get it and there's only you know a little bit left in the thing and I was like oh crap what am I gonna do I really you know wanted to make a bunch more pages so I was scrounging around in the cabinets for something else some other kind of solvent and really any anything with any solvent properties you can will work you can use household cleaners sometimes tub and tile cleaners will will do just really cool things with your art you'd be amazed but I found this um, hand sanitizer spray and I got it a see look two dollars I think and it is the main ingredient in it is alcohol so I thought well heck it's mostly alcohol it surely it'll work so I've used that as well okay one thing um, don't do this on your jelly plate unless your jelly plate specifically says that it's okay to use alcohol or, or solvent based products and like I said I don't have a jelly plate so I don't know um, I can imagine it would probably not react well so um, don't ruin your jelly plate use glass or a sheet of acrylic or something and also don't use a rubber brayer and you may be tempted when you're going along here to use your brayer to smooth out some pages don't do it the um, acetone or the alcohol will melt your brayer ask me how I know this I'm speaking from experience don't use your rubber brayer don't use your jelly plate unless the jelly plate says that you can and I, I don't I don't even know um, oh and be prepared to look a lot like this for several days unless you're smart enough to wear gloves which I am not so what we do is and there's oh inks you need alcohol inks um, these are just what I have and these are the kind that I bought you know 20 years ago and they are from their Electroset brand and they were used as re-inkers for the TRIA markers and we were uh, back then we were doing a lot of using them for an airbrushing technique too so these are the re-inkers for them they come in the Pantone colors Pantone shades and you know I've had them um, okay somebody leaked down there I've had them for a long time and if as long as you keep the lids on good they don't dry out so the bottles are just in terrible shape but the ink inside is good so that is what I'm using and let's just let's just go and there's no um, there's no process to follow here you just kind of do whatever and see what happens and that's what I'm gonna do so let's start by let's spray a little bit of acetone on our glass acetone dries really really fast so you have to put it on kind of thick or it just evaporates and then we can start just dropping some inks on there 
and these bottles you can just kind of shake them and it comes out or you can squirt it you can drop it you can squiggle designs with it you know whatever and I think I just want little spots right now And for me, putting the ink on there is just as much, or sometimes even more fun than doing the print. I just like to play in the ink. Okay. Now, get your paper ready, whatever paper that you're using. Give, that's the wrong stuff. Give it some more acetone. See how it starts to bleed out? And you can help it along, you know, if you want to let it run or whatever. But like I said, you only you don't have very much time because it does start to dry. And then lay this down. Smooth it out without using your brayer. And then there you have your lovely modeled print. Isn't that awesome? Well, I think it is. Um, spray on more stuff, or let's do the dropper. Let's drop it on. This is more acetone. Kind of let it run, and then pick it up. You got it? There you go. So, there is an alternative to your um, typical jelly printing. I'll do I'll do some more just so you can see some different stuff. I want, I want to show you what it looks like with that hand sanitizer because I was actually pleasantly surprised. It was a uh, and oh my gosh, I can't believe that worked. Moment. Okay. Now, this is the hand sanitizer spray, which has alcohol in it, which you can see is making the, the ink start to run and bleed. But it's not not pure alcohol. It's not highly saturated, so it doesn't disperse it as well as regular alcohol or acetone. Nice, huh? And it, you know, it um, keeps the inks wet longer than the others do because it is kind of toned down some, so you have a little bit more time to pick up your stuff. That's kind of difficult. Let's do page. Have some stuck together. There we go. You can also, if you want to pick up just a very light print, lay your paper down, and then either spray or drop your solvent over it, and then that will pick up and saturate the those little light leftover colors. I love that. I hope that you can see that clearly because it is just it is just a little slice of fabulous. Okay, let's do alcohol alcohol now. I didn't put it in any kind of applicator, so we're just gonna we're just gonna put entirely too much. Uh, 
Okay, let's just do that. Now, and all these are going to be like, you know, about the same colors because these are the only colors I have. So, I am using what I got. I wonder what happens if we mix the alcohol in the acetone. Will it explode? Let's find out. I have a little bit of mad scientist in me. Or I'm just always wanting to know well, what happens if... And then that's usually followed by a trip to the emergency room. But I get my questions answered. You will make mud if you're not careful. So, um, watch what you're doing. Don't let your inks just move indiscriminately. Ugh, look. Grab your print before they blend together and get too muddy. you can tell that this is it's fun it's easy it's you know if you have alcohol ink you can probably just use stuff you've already got at your house you don't have to go buy anything new and fancy unless you just want to Are you getting the idea? I'm thinking by this point in the video I will have probably um, edited out the voice part, speed it up, put on some music or something because it just gets boring. I already did that one. Let's just do some more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let me show you how to pick up off of another one. If you printed one, you got maybe you got way too much ink. You're not happy with it. But you hate to just throw out all that ink because it is it's saturated with ink. So put on some more. Um, whew, okay, he's up over the window in my art room right now. some of that off which lightens this one up and gives you a whole nother print. There you go. These dry really fast because of the the alcohol and the acetone it dries fast. It just almost almost evaporates almost instantly. Um, let's do a big one. problem is that this is the only one that has problems coming out and I've stuck a pin down there and everything it still doesn't want to come out. I'm afraid if I press on it too hard it's going to explode out because that would be about right for me. It's got something in there holding it up. The rest of them just fine. Just that one. Alright. Now let's do what? Um, let's drop on some acetone. Like that. Move it around just a little bit. And print. 
I'm going to lay your paper down center first and then out so that you don't get any um, bubbles underneath. Ooh, oh my gosh. That is gorgeous. I wonder if I can. Oh, look at there. I sure can. I didn't think it would stay wet long enough, but it did because it was on a little bit of a glossy paper. So I got two off of that. And now let's use some hand sanitizer. You know, I'm pretty sure. Monet is rolling over in his grave right now. <laughs> That's all this weird household crap I'm using. But oh well. Heck, he would have used it too if he had it. I'm just pretty sure. Ta-da! They're so thin, I never can tell if I've got one or a whole stack. And maybe drop a little alcohol on it. I can drop a little less than I did last time. And there we go. So, I think you've probably got the idea now. Alcohol inks, a piece of glass, and some solvent, and just go to town. I was fixing to clean up my little area and call it done, and then I thought, well, heck, why stop there? So I grabbed a few of these um, Dr. P.H. Martin's Radiant Concentrated Watercolors, and let's just see what they do. They come in little dropper bottles, and it is just a, this is what it says, it's a liquid concentrated watercolor. So a little bit goes a long way. And since we did so many jewel tones with those other inks, I thought I would do something a little more earthy. Okay. Let's add some water. And a, a spray bottle would probably be ideal. I don't have, I mean, my, I do have a spray bottle of water, but it's not pumping like it should, so I guess it needs to be cleaned. So I've got this icky squirt bottle that I keep water in, which actually is kind of neat because you can take the paint and kind of, you know, make designs. <laughs> so yeah, kind of make it swirly. And then let's print. Middle first. There we go. These don't do front and back quite as well as the others. They don't saturate your paper as much. So let's just pick up some on the back. There we go. Now. Okay. Yeah, we can keep going. Let's some of that run down. And I'll get another piece of paper. I think maybe oops, that one. They're getting kind of blendy now. And if they get too blendy, I can just add some more. Let's see what else I got. 
Mahogany. I can't even tell what that looks like. Is it brown? Kind of a reddish brown? Purple. Purpley brown. Kind of cool. I think those need yellow. Almost out of yellow. Okay. Water. And print. Oh, very pretty. Oh, I like that mahogany. It does come out kind of purple, doesn't it? Oops. And I've got a lot of ink leaking up at the bottom. Okay, we think. I don't know. I think I'm lacking it at least just as much. And I don't try, if I'm sure you've noticed, I don't try to cover my paper edge to edge. I'm not really all about that. Um, you know, just patches of color are really just fine with me. I like that kind of random look. use these to kind of, you know, clean up with because it's just the right size. Okay, I'm liking it. So watercolors on a uh, uh, mono printed on a glass are definitely lovely. Agree? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Now, this is really the end.